Hello everyone, Lord Victorino here. Today marks the one year anniversary of the Star vs. the Forces of Evil Season 4 finale here in the USA. In commemoration, I have decided to tackle a controversial topic of what was the real problem with Star vs. the Forces of Evil. My opinion might even surprise you. But before we get to that, I want to first bring up my YouTube channel. You see, I use it to upload videos of whatever I'm into at any given time. It's not a themed fan or business type channel. It's not monetized. I don't have a Patreon. I don't have any sponsors. I don't ask people to subscribe or to hit that notification bell nor to like or even to leave a comment. But anyone can do as they wish or not without any influence from me either way. This also means that my opinions have no outside influences either and are mine alone. Talking about YouTube, over the past year I have actually watched quite a few YouTube videos on this subject as well as read stuff on blogs, discords, Twitter, and other social media in general where I have heard some opinions on this subject such as the problem with Star vs. the Forces of Evil was it had too much filler it had too much shipping it had a flawed romance yada 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 well we can agree to disagree so I'm not going to make any arguments against any of these opinions But, I have also heard some other opinions on this subject, such as, the problem with Star vs. the Forces of Evil was, it was due to lazy writing, it was rushed, it needed to be fixed, here's how I could have done it much better myself, yada yada yada. I find these quite insulting. So I will argue against these opinions though. For it is one thing to critique or to criticize an episode, a season, or even the Star vs. the Forces of Evil series as a whole. But it's a whole other thing to, to critique or to criticize Darren Nefsey and her crew personally, just based on these types of ambiguous opinions without any real true facts to back them up with. Look, Darren Nessie and her crew worked very hard on this show, and doing an animated series takes people, time, and money. They had a budget, timetables, and many animated episodes in many different stages of production at any given time. What we see is the finished product, but what we don't see is all the hard work behind the scenes that goes into making it. And that's not counting on any possible problems that might have arose during production. Such as having to make last minute changes for any number of reasons, animation and production errors that needed to be fixed, scheduling issues, and the list probably goes on. And these type of problems can cost both time and money, both of which were very limited to them. So I can assure you that Darren Nefsey and her crew were not lazy by any means, writing or otherwise. And they were only rushed because of deadlines beyond their control. And they did the best work that they were able to do with what they were given. Also be aware that even though most of these episodes seem to have been made to be shown on a weekly basis, for the most part, they had no actual control over when any of these episodes actually aired. It be weekly, two per week, daily, or even back to back. Darren Nessie told the story she wanted to tell. And just because an episode or the show in general had not gone the way you thought it should have gone, no one has any right to say that it needed to be fixed 
or that they could have done it any better themselves. Period. Now with that out of the way, I would like to give my own personal thoughts on how I perceived Star versus the Forces of Evil. You see, I tried to think of Star versus Forces of Evil just like many other past Disney animated series. I thought I knew what Star vs. the Forces of Evil was all about, where it was going, and I even thought I knew how it might end. And there was times I didn't know what to think, from my head and my heart disagreed. I thought I knew how I felt about something, but this has changed. For I came to realize that this show was not just different, it was different different. It wasn't like comparing apples to strawberries, it was more like comparing apples to strawberry goblin dogs. For I wanted answers. I wanted the truth. I thought I could handle the truth about magic, the multiverse, and everything. So much so, I even came up with my own Star vs. the Forces of Evil theories. I also thought I knew what the main plot art of Star vs. the Forces of Evil was all about. But I had it all wrong. And I think there might be others out there that may have felt the way that I once did, and maybe even still do. And that was, the truth be told, Toffee was indeed right about all of it from the very beginning. Oh no, I'm not talking about how magic needed to be destroyed. Oh, no, no, no. It was that love is always the answer. Surprise! For I came to realize that the main plot arc of Star vs. the Forces of Evil was actually the love story of Star Butterfly, a magical princess from another dimension of Muni, and Marco Ubaldo Diaz, the safe kid from Echo Creek of Earth, and how they fell in love. All the other plot arcs were just the ends to the means. A lot did change, but the most important thing, still the same. Star vs. the Force of Evil was always about the relationship between Star and Marco from the very beginning all the way to the very end. Speaking of which, I think it's about time I brought up the giant invisible goat in the room. Arrgh. That's right, the season 4 finale, Cleaved. This was where Star put her plan into motion by destroying the magic and to defeat Mina and to save her friends and others from an untimely death. But this also meant that magic would put Star and Marco back where they belonged. Star back on Muni and Marco back in Echo Creek on Earth, where Star and Marco would never be able to be together ever again. Now, Star and Marco did manage to be together one last time in the realm of magic, hugging each other in a warm embrace, not knowing what would actually happen to them. And even though Star's plan did work, where Mina was defeated, and Star's friends and others were saved from their untimely death, both Star and Marco were indeed separated, Star ending up back on Muni, and Marco back in Echo Creek on Earth. But in a weird and wild twist of fate, Muni and Echo Creek were cleaved together, which also brought Star and Marco back together at the very end, too, where they just gave each other a simple greeting with a hey and a hi while staring into each other's eyes. Roll credits. Like myself, many of you may have wondered why didn't Star and Marco kiss or even hug once again? Well, do you know what eyes represent? They are said to be the windows into the very soul. So, in my opinion, because of all the trials and tribulations they had gone through, I believe that Star and Marco were probably still in complete shock and awe that they actually ended up back together with each other once again, after all, and were just happy to see each other. Because for them, at that time, nothing else mattered. For with or without magic, they belonged together. 
Yet to me, it wasn't this ending that mattered most of all. It was the journey, you know. For this reason, I don't believe any of that was the real problem with Star vs. the Force of Evil. But with that said, I do believe that the real problem did involve Darren Neff's inner crew after all. And it comes with a heavy heart to say this, but Darren Neffsey and her crew were just way too talented and became overachievers. For Star vs. the Force of Evil took on a life all its own. They created this incredible multiverse with vast amounts of mysterious lore leading to seamlessly endless theories, multiple captivating plot arcs that had us on the edge of our seats, thrilling villains and possible villains that always had a second guessing on who would be next. And many endearing characters. And not just the main cast, but also many supporting characters too. Most of all still have their very own fan base, even to this day. And like myself, I believe that many of us fans just cared way too much about each and every character and aspect of this show. For just like one of Star's portals, we all got sucked into it and were dragged along for the ride. And just like a good cup of pudding, we just couldn't get enough. So much so, we even ended up scraping the sides. So what is the real problem with Star vs. the Forces of Evil? Simply put, Star vs. the Forces of Evil was just too brilliant for our own good. And yet, it still never reached its full potential. That's it. Now I want to give some final thoughts on any possible future plans for Star vs. the Force of Evil, other content, and or merchandise. I know that there are many out there that have said that Star vs. the Forces of Evil is now over and that us fans should just all let it go and move on. And like myself, there are other fans that still want more Star vs. the Forces of Evil. Look, there's nothing wrong with moving on, but that does not mean that everyone else also needs to give up on this show as well. For some fans can enjoy new shows while still supporting old shows that have ended, and Star vs. the Forces of Evil is no exception. For even though Darren Nefsey and her crew have actually moved on to their very own individual projects, they have also continued to support Star vs. the Force of Evil and its fan base. And Darren Nefsey herself has even said that she would be willing to return for more Star vs. the Force of Evil once again, if ever given the chance. So there is no need for anyone to bother Darren Nefsey directly to try to get her on board. It might be true that all good things must come to an end, but I do believe that it is also true that all great things find a way to return. And I do believe that Star vs. the Forces of Evil is one of these great things. Star vs. the Forces of Evil does not need to be saved. It needs to be supported. Star vs. the Forces of Evil does not need to be fixed. It just needs to be continued. For I believe in Darren Nefsey and her crew and would love to see where they would take Star vs. the Forces of Evil next. And if Star vs. the Forces of Evil were ever to return in some way, shape, or form, it be a new season, spin-off, movie, and or etc., I even believe that some of those naysayers would return to check it out as well. But... I also wish Darren Esty and her crew all the very best in whatever they do. It be returning to something old, or it be involved in something new. Also, be aware that Star vs. the Forces of Evil is actually the sole property of Disney. And for any of this to happen, it would have to be all up to Disney in the end. 
Now, as far as wanting more official Disney Star vs. the Forces of Evil merchandise and other content, absolutely. And I also believe that there are many other Star vs. the Forces of Evil and Disney fans out there that do as well. For a lot of other past top Disney shows got their very own merchandise and other content during the show's run as well as even after the show had ended. Such as... Console video games. More books. DVDs and Blu-ray. Board games. Official Disney pins. Vinylizations. And believe it or not, even lamps. Not to mention Theme park character meet and greets, theme park mini dance party parades, interactive theme park attractions, and the list just goes on and on. I just feel that Star vs. the Force of Evil should be treated the same way as Disney has treated their other past top Disney shows. Nothing less, nothing more. Come on, Disney. Why keep chasing after your pot of gold at the end of a rainbow when you already have something even better right underneath one. Just saying. If and when any more Star vs. the Forces of Evil ever gets greenlit once again, I hope to hear that when Darren Nessie goes out to put her talented crew back together, that each of them would stare right into the Darren Nessie's eyes and say, you mother of a butterfly. I'm in. Well, there you have it. This concludes my opinions on this controversial topic of what was the real problem with Star vs. the Forces of Evil. Bye!